Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus one more time. Amen. Can you walk up to two or three people and tell them good morning? Let them know that you are glad they are in the presence of God. Are you just looking around or you are walking to one or two people? Appreciate them sincerely. It's good to see you this morning. Tell them. I'm glad you are among the living. And I'm glad that we'll enjoy his presence together. Amen. Father, we love and we honor you. Thank you for this morning. The privilege that you have granted us to drink from the fountain of wisdom that only you can give. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you speak to our hearts. Help us to rise. Help us to ascend in the spirit. And in the name of Jesus that our lives will never remain the same after this encounter. For in Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you again for this unique privilege. And... Um, We'll just get straight to the business of the morning. The Lord began to deal with us yesterday along the lines of understanding his prophetic end time program. Yesterday when um, I began, we considered a few things that it is important for us to know that God has a program for the nations. God has a program for this region and that we must understand his program and then be in alignment submit ourselves to partner with what the spirit of god is doing and then we did say that god's prophetic program for the nations affect three categories of people number one the world of unbelievers number two the church and number three society hallelujah and then we took the subject of the global harvest yesterday night for a case study we examined a few things from matthew chapter 9 being our text jesus wept uh well it was it was it was a bleeding from his heart he was moved with compassion and it was that the field was wide and yet the laborers were few and he said pray ye the lord of the harvest that he will send laborers and so i told us that every time there is a problem as far as the harvest is concerned the diagnosis based on scripture and in the mind of jesus is the inefficiency of the laborers and the lord challenged us yesterday to be aware in a greater measure of the need to see sinners and to see souls saved this morning in continuation i want to discuss now the second level of the program of god that has to do with the church hallelujah so we we dealt with the world of sinners and unbelievers but the second assignment is to the church and this morning through the lens of scripture the lord wants to show us the kind of vessel that can be used by god especially in this end time it is a costly assumption to believe that god will use everybody it's a costlier assumption to believe that god will use every available vessel the narrative until now is that once you are available you'll be used by god that is not true even our world teaches us that it takes more than availability when students write jam or write whatever exam they are available to go to college but not everybody makes the quota the life of gideon and the story of gideon is a revelation that many can be called but in truth only few are chosen so we need to examine through the lens of scripture what kind of a believer is God looking for? What kind of a man of God is God looking for? What kind of a vessel 
is God looking for? If it is true that God has standards and his standards are unbending, his standards are uncompromising, then it is important for us to not just be aware that God wants to move across the nations and not just be aware that we can make ourselves available, but we need to know God's standards so that we obtain grace to rise to that level that can make us great and prepared vessels. When it has to do with the program of God, God is not ashamed to declare his need for man. As mighty and as great as God is, he has been very vocal and outspoken as to the fact that when it has to do with the advancement of his purposes on earth, he needs the cooperation and the partnership of man. From the moment he made that divine declaration in Genesis 1, 26 down to 28, the Bible says, and Elohim said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness, he says, and let them have dominion. The moment that utterance came out from the lips of God, it became scripturally incorrect for God to do anything on earth and leave man out of the program. Not because he does not have the sovereign power, the earth still remains the Lord. But from that statement, he has come into an eternal partnership with man. As far as his dealings on earth is concerned, there will always be a need for a man. It's important for us to appreciate this as an introduction this morning. Sometimes you see the Bible express God as though he were helpless. And you are tempted to ask, God, you are so mighty. What is it about man that makes you so... Can't you push him out of the way and do everything yourself? This was a contemplation of the psalmist. Hallelujah. That should be Psalm 8. The psalmist began to vocalize his contemplations and he says, When I consider the works of your hands, this and that and that, all that you have created, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Nor the son of man, he says, that thou visitest him. He says, you have made him a little lower than the angels. The word there is Elohim, a little lower than God. You have crowned him with glory and virtue. And Paul, quoting that scripture in Hebrews chapter 2, added a greater context to it. You have set him above the works of your hands. You have made him the zenith of your creation. And that in doing so, you left nothing that was not under his feet. He says, but we do not yet see all things under his feet. So let us have it as a very clear understanding that for as long as the program of God in this side of his kingdom is concerned, God will always need men. You would hear expressions in scripture, I sought for a man. As a case study, let's go to Isaiah chapter 6. The Bible begins the book of Isaiah with a very interesting rendition. Prophet Isaiah begins that book by giving several profound prophecies. But when we get to chapter 6 and verse 1, 6 and verse 1, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Verse 2. And it stood, above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain they covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. Verse 3. And one cried unto another saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse 4. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Now, when Isaiah saw this, he was watching this in a vision. He said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hands, 
which he had taken with the tongues from the altar and he laid it upon my mouth and said lo this had touched thy lips and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged and also I heard a voice of the Lord saying verse 8 is my verse of emphasis whom shall I send and who will go for us whom shall I send and who will go for us this is a divine call from God himself look at the kind of glory and splendor that was described from verse 1 down to verse 5 how can such a great God look at the beauty of the seraphims themselves covered with six wings with two they covered their faces with two they covered their feet and with two they flew should such a God be in need of anybody Isaiah said the whole earth is filled with his glory and that even his vision the smoke of his presence filled everywhere and instead of God making a declaration to say Isaiah let it be known to you that I am God all by myself I can do anything I want to do I am Alpha Omega you would think that is the kind of sound that should come from such splendor and yet in the midst of that splendor the sound that comes out is who shall go for us who shall I send and who shall go for us and Isaiah said here am I send me many believers wonder why in every generation it looks as if God just isolates a few people particularly as touching the fivefold ministry and then they receive such a mighty investment of his grace and power upon their lives doing great and mighty things for God throughout their generation while it looks like there is a crowd of others just crouching to find relevance as far as spiritual things are concerned this troubled me for many years as to why a God that is so benevolent and lavish would seem to be so meticulous about the use of men until I found out that it took more than availability to be used by God so let's journey a bit to see a few of the factors that determine God's using a man. Because I can tell you, in the Southeast, God is still looking for men. In this nation, God is still looking for men. In the world today, God is still looking for men. We examined yesterday that Jesus himself said, Truly, the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few and he left us with a recommendation he said pray ye the lord of the harvest that he will recruit more laborers hallelujah and god's recruitment system is about the strictest i am aware of in our world today there are many corporations that sometimes they call to receive um, new employees new staff structure and sometimes you see the burdensome requirements that they put you must have this number of years of experience you must have this range of qualifications and even at that it does not guarantee by itself that you will get the job and you can find out for a job with a vacancy of 10 or 15 spaces you can find as much as 15,000 graduates apply am I right on that and people invent all kinds of skills some use their uncles who are working there other people go to church for prayer other people consult shrines and everybody invents his skill to ensure that he gets into that place and at the end of it it looks like there are a few people who seem to secure that spot and if you go and ask the HR department they will tell you that they are a kind they may all be graduates they may be all certified but there are certain people that the corporation is looking for and the reason why those corporations have the standards that are desired is because they do not compromise on their standards God loves everybody but it's important for us to know that he is passionate about the fruition of his program and that passion is what has driven his strictness 
in the kinds of vessels that he uses and that he will use there are three requirements that the bible reveals as to the kind of man god uses the kind of vessel that god desires to use and i want you to please lend me your attention scripture starts by saying apostle peter teaching us nevertheless the foundation of the lord standard sure it says having this seal that the lord knoweth them that are his then he says and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity then he says but in a great house that there are four kinds of vessels in every great house number one vessels of gold number two vessels of silver number three vessels of wood number four vessels of clay and the bible says already by that description some vessels are ordained unto honor and some vessels are unto dishonor but that you can transit this is the good news that should be first um, peter i thought he was looking for it. okay second timothy now two and let's do 20 and 21 second timothy 2 21 that was paul mentoring his son timothy but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of earth and he says some vessels are unto honor and some dishonor now watch 21 carefully apostle paul is teaching us in this scripture that a possibility exists that you can evolve yourself from any level and any kind of vessel you are into the highest quality of vessels now scientifically clay cannot become silver clay cannot become gold wood cannot become gold but here is paul teaching us that in the spirit transiting in quality as a vessel is possible that i can start as a vessel of wood and a vessel of clay do you know the difference the difference in the quality of these vessels are only revealed in the presence of fire you never know how qualitative they are until you expose them to fire when you expose wood to fire it 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 just completely burns off when you expose clay to fire it breaks but when you expose silver and gold it becomes malleable enough to be molded into any shape you desire but there is no disintegration are we together yeah. so he's saying that these four kinds of because of the fierceness of the assignment that the vessels will be involved in he's saying there are some vessels because they have chosen to remain in that state their destiny will be dishonor eventually they will not last not because it is the will of god to keep them that way the quality of the vessel they have assumed does not have longevity in view are we together so he's now saying there is a condition upon which a man can evolve to become a more superior vessel. And the key is found in verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he says he shall be a vessel unto honor. That means becoming a vessel unto honor is not just the will of God per se it is totally the responsibility of the individual vessel he says he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and then prepared unto every good work may we be such vessels in the name of Jesus Christ I have studied great people who have been used by God in modern history and from scripture all in a bid to piece together the ingredients that truly makes a man usable 
by God. I wanted that first for my life and then to be able to extend that information to be a blessing to as many who sincerely desire to be used by God. I studied materials of men like T.L. Osborne, materials of men like Lester Sumrall, great prophets who had gone to be with the Lord, consulted materials of our fathers of faith. What exactly did God find in these men that made them greatly used by God? And I came up with three keys, and this is what I want to share this morning. Number one, the first requirement, non-negotiable demand, that God must find in an individual to be greatly used by him is called the purity of your heart. Please write it down. The purity of your heart. In order of priority, I have worked with God a bit, I tell you with all humility, and I can tell you that this I have learned about God. The greatest posture that a man can take to secure the attention of God over your life is the state of your heart. The state of your heart vetoes your prayer life. The state of your heart vetoes your fasting. The state of your heart vetoes your Bible study. There is no other Christian experience that is exalted higher than the state of your heart. Every other thing in your life as a Christian activity only finds its relevance with respect to the state of your heart please understand this our world today is full of very sincere spiritual activities from fastings to prayer to word study to all kinds of spiritual activities and many people find out that the more they engage in these activities it looks like these activities carry a semblance of it, it, it's it captures within it the ability to bring them closer to God but in practicing these things they still find out that what they are looking for is truly not found because it is not found in activities is found in a state there must be a posture that any believer who desires to be used by God if you want to be used by God as a vessel I tell you the truth no matter what else you bring to the table if it is outside of the purity of the state of your heart God cannot do much with you do you know the reason why David earned a status in the Bible called a man after God's heart I don't know how many times David had direct encounters with God but there are people in scripture who had greater encounters than David an example Moses Moses was called the meekest man but never called a man after God's heart look at the laborious assignment that was given to Moses to take God's covenant people from Egypt the land of captivity and to take them to Canaan a land flowing with milk and honey God called him the meekest man and yet he never had that report that he was a man after God's heart how about other prophets who had great encounters with God? Not even Samuel, the mighty prophet, was called a man after God's heart. If you want to know the life of David and why God called him a man after his heart, you go and study the entire life of David. At the end of it, you will almost be confused as to why such a man, as to why such a man should be called Maybe you may need to put your phones on silent, please. A man after God's heart. How does he call a man like David a man after God's heart? Read your Bible and see some of the atrocities that David committed. Read your Bible and see some of the things that David went through. The reason for Uriah's death. The reason for many other things that happened. And yet, among the many things that God could accord this man was the status of a man after my heart. There are many names that God gives men. God is not careless in naming men certain things. He called Abraham my friend. You know what it means to be a friend of God? We are not discussing that. But do not downplay that status. 
if a man is called a friend of God it is a very serious commendation there are some things that will not happen to you again when you become a friend of God for instance you cannot be lost again it is a privilege for you to be lost God will take you even if it's an untimely death but you will not be lost again it is a status and an honor when a man is called a friend of God hmm. hallelujah the second thing that you earn as the friend of God is that there is nothing he does within his program that he will keep you outside of that information that's what happened to Abraham shall I hide this from Abraham he had to come and tell Abraham this is what I want to do to Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham says stop I have an interest there do not go yet there is somebody's interest that I need to protect and he literally negotiated the salvation of Lot and his family the friend of God so you now understand what he meant when he told the apostles he said I no longer call you servants but friends they didn't even know what he was saying that is the reason why even in heaven the foundation of the new Jerusalem has their name the names of the 12 apostles can you imagine that let's get back to what we're discussing the purity of your heart let me show you a scripture second chronicles 25 1 and 2 second chronicles 25 1 and 2 a very interesting story about a king called Amaziah we're going to read verse 1 and 2 together are we ready one to read please Amaziah was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Jehoiada of Jerusalem now read verse 2 as loud as you can one to read and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord but not with a perfect heart one more time what kind of a statement is this how can you do what was right in the sight of the Lord and then the Lord says even though this was right there is still a problem with it the problem was not the correctness of the activity the problem was the state of the heart that executed it that a man can preach correctly and yet be found wanting in the spirit a man can do evangelism correctly and still be found wanting in the spirit you can build ministry correctly and still be found wanting the Bible says give us that scripture <laughs> he did what was right in the sight of the Lord but there was a, tr a problem he was not a fake man of God he was not a fake prophet he was not a fake apostle he was not a fake preacher genuine you would come and see him preach and you would be so convicted by his message and yet in marking his script the Lord gives us the marking standard that beyond the correctness of a man's activity the first thing that is marked in the spirit is the state of your heart never forget this scripture for the rest of your life you can fast right you can pray right you can give right you can preach right you can do business right and be surprised that in spite of the correctness of your activity heaven still finds you wanting Amaziah he served he did what was right in the sight of the Lord but not with a perfect heart hmm. the purity of a man's heart is the principal determinant of your doing business with God of your being used by God mightily used by God beyond your activities 
God looks at the state of your heart every man you see that God has used and is using greatly I can tell you whether you believe it or not there is something God has found about the sincerity of their heart no wonder in choosing vessels by the time you see God's selection you will be angry because when God is done choosing the kinds of people they do not match what you would have wanted it does not make sense are we together now do you know the reason why Jonah ran away from the instruction God gave him there was something about God Jonah knew that out of these depraved people who were idol worshippers who were insincere people that if you went and he preached to them that as bad as they were their hearts were still pure because their activity was a product of their orientation and they had not been given a chance yet to declare whether they loved God or not and so God seemed to have an interest in a terrible nation called Nineveh and Jonah knew this that God will look beyond the wrongness of their activity that in spite of the fact that that land was in decadence the purity of their heart was crying for help and he said Jonah go to them and Jonah said I know something about God by the time I now preach these people will repent and he will forgive them as if he did not see anything they did and Jonah ran away immediately Jonah ran away he became an enemy of God there's no time I would have taught you what it means to be an enemy of God to be an enemy of God does not mean to be satanic the moment you become an a consistent interruption to his program even if he's the one who ordained you you become an enemy of God so when you are praying the prayer let God arise and all his enemies verify first that you are not one of them did you hear what I said Jonah was not a fake prophet but because he became an interruption to God's program in Nineveh look at how merciless his judgment came people received prophet Jonah into their boat and started going down they lost their businesses they lost their relevance they were about to lose their lives how can a mighty prophet be the reason for the downfall of many if you know God you will know that it's not about being fake or real it's about being in his program or outside of his program so in the moment you say I am a genuine man of God to mean because I am a genuine man of God God's program must be advanced through my life you are in error there are many genuine people who are interruptions to God's program are you learning now yes how can Jonah a, the Bible never charged Jonah with falsehood the Bible never charged Jonah with idolatry and yet because he refused to go and preach to Nineveh a land that he was justifiably angry this were a people written by their activities they were wicked people yet their hearts were pure you now see why Jesus taught in the Beatitudes blessed are the pure in heart there is a reward for them he says they shall see God that the purity in heart is a requirement for encounters my god that means someone can be smoking and can be drinking and god is looking beyond that wickedness and he's looking at the state of his heart and the language of his heart is saying i need a savior and jesus christ will come and appear to that gentleman under a bridge and say i have come to visit you and you are wondering why another person is fasting three days dry and may never have an encounter the, i hope you know that the heart of men has a voice say not in your heart a man's heart can have a voice beyond the activities of men god listens to the heart of man i can pretend here and be doing a lot of religiosity and saying oh apostle joshua selman this is a humble man of god and then heaven is watching while all that religious drama is happening just to make a name heaven and is hearing the voice of pride the voice of unseriousness are we learning now no wonder in selecting the one who would be the king david i hope you know david's being a man after god's heart 
did not just happen when he was king it was why he was called in the first place that gentleman was in the wilderness where nobody saw him nobody could clap for him and yet he defended his father's sheep even at the expense of his life with nobody to see and he did not come back and tell his father this is what happened when it was time to anoint even the great samuel with his height of discernment was about to make a mistake and god said hold on this is not how i judge if you were to judge Eliab and all his brothers you would see them as people of stature and intelligence are we together now and yet that was not how god judged them so a correct prophet with the ability to hear god says no to god's program and becomes god's enemy immediately he goes to board a ship going at the other side and because of that all the passengers in his ship started losing things there was a storm now do you know that the anointing was not designed to fight god the anointing only fights what is antichrist that means if god is the factor and the resistance behind your life no amount of prayer except the prayer of mercy will save you there are many people trying to use the anointing to stop things that is the very resistance of God that is bringing it. You see our ignorance, we think the anointing is just a multi-purpose instrument that fights anything, even God. No. The anointing has a protocol for its function. It must verify that what is the cause of that problem is antichrist. Then it can fight it and bring it to order. Because the assignment of the anointing is to bring all things into the will of God. That is a singular assignment of the anointing. Before the anointing works, it verifies the will of God with respect to that situation. So if an individual is sick, the anointing diagnoses that state with respect to the will of God and knows that this is not the will of God. Now it can flow freely because its assignment now becomes to bring confirmation to the word. Outside of the will of God, the anointing has no assignment except to confirm and to bring compliancy to the will of god are we learning this morning so we're examining the factors that will cause a vessel to be used by god and number one we are saying the purity of your heart and we consider the scripture let's look at it one more time i don't want you to forget that scripture not jonah my dear media man second chronicles 25 and verse 2 let's read it again and he did that which was right in the sight of the lord but not with a perfect heart he preached correctly from a doctrinal standpoint there was no error in what he said yet it did not produce the effect you thought would produce you wrote the book correctly theologically accurate yet the impact that should come from it did not come you sang correctly when you came on stage nothing wrong with the revelation of your song but while you were singing people were just watching you as if you were reciting a poem to yourself the power that should accompany the correctness of that activity did not follow it there's something wrong with the heart when everything is right and the result still does not come the problem is not the activity the problem is the heart let me repeat myself when everything is right your tithing is right your giving is right your everything is right and yet the result that should follow does not follow forget about the activity and go back to re-examine the state of your heart when your preaching is right theologically constructed right with power and passion yet the transformation that should follow your teaching does not follow leave the issue of the sermon and go back to examine the state of your heart many people would have experienced deliverance faster if they understood that most of the things we think are the problems in our lives and our ministries are truly not the problem it's not the problem of the elders even though it looks like eldership is the problem in the church it's not the problem of money even though it looks like money is the real problem 
it's not the problem of witches and wizards coming to your church to masquerade as choir members or masquerade as protocol members that, that is not the issue in the, you notice that in diagnosing problems we diagnose every other thing but the heart why is this church not growing for instance i think it's because we're at a, a wrong location no i think it's because maybe my sermons are not correct maybe they are too short maybe they are too long maybe to, to alter and we invent all kinds of skills that touch every other activity but the real problem the state of the heart the state of the heart I have had people come to meet me and say apostle I'm tired of this thing I don't know what God wants again I fasted till I'm almost feeling sick no power no revelation in the midst of the fasting and prayer i still had the dream i was trying to avoid again those spirits came as if they are not aware that i'm praying in a prayer program after three hours of praying i just wanted to take a short nap and at just that five minutes i was still in my village again what kind of what kind of 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 discouragement is this The problem is not the activity correcting the activity without correcting your heart will only recycle your frustration let me say it again correcting the activity without correcting your heart hmm. and I hope you know that the Lord has a lot of things to say about the heart of man Jeremiah 17 9 and 10 please give it to us let's see God's own diagnosis about and concerning the heart of man the bible says the heart is deceitful that means the heart is so deceitful it can deceive even its owner you who is the owner of the heart can be deceived by your own heart the heart of man is deceitful above all things he said and desperately wicked who can know it verse 10 watch how god rewards let's read one to read please I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. That means in rewarding men, in opening doors, in allocating graces, I look beyond just the zeal. There is something about the heart of men that I search for. The first requirement to be a vessel unto honor to transit from a vessel of wood and clay to a vessel of silver and gold to be like that man that the Lord is seeking for to change nations to change the climate of Enugu the southeast to be lifted as a vessel right from this place to the ends of the earth ladies and gentlemen let's forget about the issue of church for one minute let's forget about the issue of apostle and prophet for one minute let's forget about the issue of intelligent ministrations for one minute and let's allow the lord that great physician to perform a surgery in our hearts one of the worst medical cases an individual can have is cardiac arrest or anything that has to do with your heart are we together Medical science would tell us that the major reason why people lose their lives is that eventually their hearts fail. There are organs that fail in your body and you can still, the ball can still be running, but not when your heart fails. Leave every other thing in your body right, but let your heart fail and you will die in an instant. With a correct brain, you will still die. With feet that is healthy, you will still die. With a body that you have labored, taking it to the gym, you will still die. But there are people whose feet have been amputated and yet they are alive there are people who have lost fingers there are people who have lost their sense of smell lost their sense of hearing lost their sense of sight there are even cases of people who have dementia there are people who have had brain damage and regardless what happens to them the deterioration provided their hearts are still pumping there is still hope for them When you borrow that, that means your church building can still be working properly. The chairs can still be working well. The television station still working well. 
you're speaking as a man of God still well intelligence still there but the moment your heart is wrong there is a spiritual cardiac arrest and you will not understand the reason why in spite of partners in spite of branches in spite of everything there is no motion there is no progress I am telling you that the number one key in being used by God is your heart condition you are the first you are the stream you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life are everything when you get to a point in your life where your love for Jesus becomes greater than your love for fame your love for Jesus becomes greater than your passion for anointing your love for Jesus becomes greater than your desire to be a celebrity your love for Jesus becomes greater than your ability or your desire to have ministrations to be a great person then you have gotten to that realm that rare realm in the spirit where only few men ever get to now let me tell you this nobody has the power to make his heart pure you only have the power to allow God make it pure did you hear what I said it is not within your power to make your heart pure the journey of the purification of a man's heart is equal to the journey to death. Nobody, no matter how sincere, it is not given to you to make your heart pure by yourself. You can only give God allowance and say, Father, I don't know how far this journey is going to take me, but let's begin that journey. And when you start that journey, step by step, he will begin to lead you through several processes let me tell you how God purifies the hearts of men what I'm about to tell you may disturb some of you but that is the truth there are three strategies in the Bible that God uses to purify the hearts of men number one is called the furnace of affliction that's why I said it would disturb many of you <laughs> Count it all joy, my brethren, when you face diverse temptations. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And that if you allow patience, verse 4, now James 1, let patience have her perfect work. What will it make you? That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. There is something called the furnace of affliction. And the goal is not to destroy you. When you read Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2, it says, Fear not, I have redeemed you, O Israel. Bring someone to become a kingdom financier and gives him an instruction. Give away your car. Give away your house. Empty your account. And you say, no, this is God. This is unfair. How can this brother, somebody that gave me a lift last week, is trekking today? And God says, leave me. I know what I'm doing. Because the kind of wealth I want to trust to this man can kill him if that circumcision does not happen. And so God says, leave him. And you now get up and say, no, I make up my mind. My friend, I decided to rent a house for you. Move in there. You become an interruption. I have taught you that you don't have to be fake to be an enemy of God. The moment you are a consistent interrupter of his program, you become his enemy, even if you are Jonah. In the kingdom, it's not always about fake and real. It's about the will of God or otherwise. When the captain of the Lord's army appeared to Joshua, Joshua asked him a very interesting question. He said, are you for us? 
or against us what was the answer he said neither in other words that's not how god works when he comes he does not take side his will is always his side so an unbeliever can be in the will of god and while you are praying for god to destroy him god will leave him there even if he's a politician because he has found out that he's been in his will will achieve his purposes much more because that is how god raised cyrus is. this is the mystery about god so you can see a ceo who may not be a christian and you will be praying and say god get this guy out of the way and let a tongue talking person sit there and god examines your prayer in light of his will and fights out that based on the conclusion that his will has provided this vessel is the most appropriate for now because all the other vessels will not birth his will no matter how you pray god will not take that man out of that place listen this is why your prayer does not carry much if it is outside the will of god and this is the confidence that we have is that in your bible that when we ask anything not according to our desire according to his will there is a guarantee that he heareth us most people do not know how determined god is to see his will come to pass read your bible and see how god punished even the people he loved because they became an interruption to his will who would know that God would be the reason for the captivity of Israel? Yet he was the same. When you study scripture, if you study scripture outside of the will of God, God will look like a confusing person to you. One moment you are bringing deliverance to a people. Next moment you are the one giving access to their enemies to destroy them. What kind of a God are you like that? Because everything in his economy revolves around his will. Hallelujah. So you can find a man as a man of God. You can look at a gentleman in your church and God will tell you, this guy, I have called him to be a great worshiper. But the prophet that God should raise from your church is not willing to work with God and is not willing to be serious. And that vacancy becomes there for a long time. If the worshiper starts aligning himself to the training of a prophet, God can switch his assignment and give him that bishopric. He can start as a worshiper and not know what evolved him into a prophet because in God's mind there is nothing like he must be like this forever everything is with respect to his will and it can change if it interrupts his will is someone learning this morning these are things that we need to understand the will of God is the focal point in God's dealing with men more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life ladies and gentlemen when Jesus was in Gethsemane, he prayed a very disturbing prayer. He said, Father, if it is possible, can you take this cup off me? But he remembered that in as much as he was the son of God, God will give up anything and anyone to preserve his will. So he quickly said, nevertheless, even if it means forgetting about my prayer and not answering it, not my will, but your. angels are not shown mercy that's why jesus did not die for them you see there are spirits i hope you know that satan is not the only fallen spirit and satan in truth is not even the worst of the spirits hmm. 
There are spirits today that are being bound in everlasting chain. Is that in your Bible? Satan is not even one of them. And the Bible says those spirits have been bound for the sake of the elect. I hope you know it was God that designed the lake of fire. Hello? <laughs> the lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. Who designed it? That's where Satan will be thrown into. So who would have designed it? The lake of fire is different from hell. Oh. When you read the book of Revelations, hell itself and death will be relocated into the lake of fire. The Bible says that is the second death. So officially, the judgment of sinners has not begun. It will start officially when Satan joins them in that destruction. Are we Bible students? Yeah. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. It is a representation of his justice. It is a representation of his holiness. It remains so through eternity. Satan himself will be taken to the lake of fire. Death as a spirit, the fourth man upon the rider upon the horse that Revelation gives. Are we together? The one riding upon the pale horse whose name is death will also be relocated to the lake of fire. Is it not in your Bible? Yes. And all this will be born. Satan has not started his judgment. The Bible says he knows that his time is short. So there is a time allotted for him. It is the reason why you cannot bind all the demon spirits and, and Satan and keep them in one place and stop their motion. You cannot. You can only dispel them within your environment as they interrupt the purposes of God. There is nobody who has the ability to gather all the demons and all the spirits. Not even Jesus did it. When he was going to cast out demons, he did not bind them to keep them to say you will never move. They are given the liberty of mobility. You can only sanitize your environment, sanitize your life and your atmosphere with respect to birthing the purposes of God. But a time is going to come where there will be a clarion call. They will be gathered by themselves. That was what was adumbrated in the parable of the wheat and the tears. Is it not in your Bible? Are we Bible students? Remember the wheat and the tears? The Bible says while men slept, an enemy came. Am I right? And he sowed tears among the wheat. And when they came and saw it, they found out that something was wrong. And then the farmer said, okay, let us... He said, no, 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 no. Don't do that like that. In doing that, you will not know which one is the wheat and tear. He said, let them grow. When they grow, there is something only the wheat can carry that the tears will not carry. And when it is the time of the harvest, you will now gather the wheat and then you will put the tears together and burn them in everlasting fire. That's what Jesus taught us. So you see that there are many things we do as believers that is not from a standpoint of spiritual intelligence. You cannot bind the spirits that are around Enugu or the East and put them in one place and say in the name of Jesus Christ, from today, you don't have access to mobility. No. Every spirit Jesus casted out is still in the earth. The spirits that oppress men today, the bodies that they are oppressing is not the first. They, have, they are used to occupy many, many bodies. That is why you see Satan has an advantage of experience. You cannot use experience against him. You only use the forces of victory that have been given through Christ. In terms of experience, they have longevity of stay. They have entered and possessed and oppressed and manipulated too many human bodies. You are not the first preacher and you are not the first church to receive an onslaught from Satan. Using experience may be a very weak tool to bring in victory to yourself. Now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph. Hallelujah. Are we still together? We are discussing that which makes a man usable, not just available. And number one, we said the state of your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, in your journey in ministry and in your journey in life and destiny, you will confront many things that will want to challenge the position of God in your life. For instance, fame. For instance, 
persecution in fact it says what shall separate us from the love of god then it begins to list it there is a concise list i hope you know that both good and bad things can disrupt god's position in your life for instance there are people today who keep saying lord i love you with all my heart until the day somebody gives you a hundred million cash or one billion the appetite for prayer dies as you are receiving that money immediately because you find out that many of your prayer requests was driven by your need for bread and tea and now the passion to pray and to fast is no longer there how about when god announces you as a man of god and everybody already knows you as a man of god what is the need to study again what is the need to pray again what is the need to fast again after all the nations know you you see that there are many people who leave God in the face of plenty. There are many people who leave God in the face of glitz and glamour. They leave God in the face of when they evolve to versions of, the, of themselves that the nation celebrates. You see, many of them will leave the things of God. So before you begin the journey with God, he probes you and says, let me work on you and furnish you to become a vessel unto honor. There is a level in life when you grow in terms of increase financial increase or in influence there are certain groups upon the earth that watch the growth of men like a meter when you hit a certain threshold they will come and meet you they will sell you ideas and say join us become part of us and there are privileges you will enjoy if you have not met them they are coming just keep rising i assure you by the god of heaven you know what i'm talking about and you know i'm not lying in every state in every city in every region and in every nation there there are groups of people mandated by the devil whether they know they are used by him or not you keep rising let your company keep rising let your ministry keep rising one day there will be a knock on your door spiritually or physically you will be called into a conversation and they'll say we are proposing to you this now you will understand what the Bible means when it says, what shall it profit a man when he gains? Show me the market where you do that kind of business. That you gain the whole world and lose your soul. If I want to sell my soul now, call the name of the shop for me that I will go. What shop in Enugu receives souls and gives them the world in exchange? Yet the Bible says there is a mysterious marketplace on earth where what you sell is not spare part where what you sell are we together is not clothes the commodity is your very soul and there are men that market is a busy market till tomorrow satan proposed it to jesus he said come the third temptation the first temptation of jesus is the first temptation that every man will go through the temptation of need bread your food turn this stone to bread manipulate ministry to satisfy your hunger manipulate the people that go. it is within your power to turn stones to bread and by the time hunger is there he will not come when you are full he will come when there is crisis in the ministry he will come when you need to send your children to school and says remember you're a prophet can't you just call some numbers and somebody will come and give you money can't you quote can't you prophesy the account number of the person and receive 10 million why struggle and have to go through the cross when you can just bow to me and have the world now can i tell you we're examining the heart condition of man i hope i'm not wasting your time you must survive that number one temptation there are men who have fallen like a pack of cards because they could not survive it if you are not hungry your temptation will not be about food to eat satan is not stupid he will come to you do you know a spirit called seducing spirits in the bible the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons is that in your bible you know how seduction works seduction has no power over you until it unites with a need there has to be a desire in your heart for seduction to work am i right on that 
if you are looking for a political position chances are excellent that the weapon the devil the seducing spirits will operate in your life with respect to that desperate need so for jesus because he was hungry having fasted 40 days and 40 nights the spirits came the devil came himself and said you are hungry jesus don't tell lies i know you are hungry remember you are the way the truth and the life you are hungry turn this stone to bread turn this stone to bread abuse the use of it manipulate that power to grant your selfish and mundane desires and jesus said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of god second temptation that everybody must survive is the temptation of maintaining your spirituality in the face of greatness the bible says he took him to a holy the top of a holy mountain of the temple and told him fall down there that is the temptation of great men the moment you become great and you are spiritually vibrant the next temptation is be careless with your spiritual life fall down after all it is written he will put his angels charge over you an abuse of grace and mercy they will bear thee up on their wings lest you dash your feet against a stone don't pray you are still anointed go for the conference without preparing even while on stage you are full of revelation something must come for you to preach is it not just to preach and collect your money or honorarium and, and go back that is the temptation of great men so the moment you become great know that your spiritual life is the first point of attack not your church your life he took him to a holy city and said fall down throw yourself down after all he will put his angels charge will the angels watch you go down and not protect you is it not written that he shall put his angels charge over you they shall bear thee up on their wings lest you dash your foot against the stone temptation number three that all men must survive the bible says that satan this one eh satan took him to an exceeding high mountain mountains in scripture talks about spheres of influence he took him there and the bible says he showed him all the glories of the world in a moment the kingdoms of the world matthew 4 says and the glory of them question show me where that mountain is today that you stand upon and you can see the glories of all the world and the kingdoms and here's what he proposed to him verse 9 all these things i will give thee if thou will fall down and worship me southeast herein lies the revelation of what satan really wants he's not interested in your church he's not interested in your money he's not even interested in the child he's not interested in your name or your fame it looks like he's attacking all those things and you may be saying why is satan interested in my marriage why is he interested in my children make no mistakes he's not interested in them this is what he's interested in please give us that scripture that you will fall down and worship me everywhere you see the antichrist system there must be expressions of worship remember nebuchadnezzar 90 feet stature of solid gold and he says after you hear the sound of worship everybody bow down hmm. that is why the greatest expression of your loyalty for god is not just in your service it's in your worship your worship your worship oh be lifted above all other gods we lay our crown and worship you you be lifted above all other gods we lay our crown and worship you Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our 
our crowns and worship. Many of you have no idea what happens in the kingdom of darkness when the saints worship. A picture of the worship in heaven was given to us in Revelations that when they said, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, the Bible says the elders will cast their crown and everybody bows before one king. This is all Satan wants transgenerational allegiance that is the reason why courses have been programmed across every family to make sure that there will always be a representation somebody who will represent worship and loyalty and allegiance to satan even to jesus he said bow and worship me it's not that i want to hold man i don't need man for anything i don't need his prosperity for anything ask people who are involved in cultism or involved in witchcraft or all kinds of things the only thing satan wants is anything that commits you and brings you to a point where he becomes god over your life he can give you all the prosperity he can give you whatever it is that is the reason why the moment you want to prosper without your loyalty to him he will fight you tooth and nail you want to make money without me he says, I wish above all things that he prosper and be in health. But make sure your soul prospers. It is that soul part that Satan does not want. Can I tell you, I made up my mind. I rather fail in ministry than worship the devil. I rather fail. You don't worship Satan by worshiping Satan. You worship Satan by worshiping anything that is not God. Satan is too smart to tell you, worship me. He will say, worship money. Worship yourself. Worship your wife. Worship your husband. Worship your church. Worship your sermons. And you do not know it's still idolatry. Worship your prayer life. Worship your fasting life. Even worship your Bible study. And while you are doing all of that, you think I am worshiping God. No. Anything that is not God, even if it came from God, is an idol. So that you don't think I'm talking of going to the shrine to go and bow down. Satan is not stupid. He has understood the world of men. So he will tell you, worship any other thing, including yourself, including your wife, including your husband, including ministry, including money, including your certificate. By any means, I allow you to worship any other thing, provided it is not the God of heaven. And can I tell you, day and night, there are people bowing down to Satan. But as they bow down to their certificates, they bow down to Satan. As they bow down to their ministry, every Sunday there are many idol worshippers who do not know they are idol worshippers. They would rather give up Jesus than give up church. They would rather give up anything. <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you, if you ever believe, you ever believe that on your own without the pruning of the spirit you are worshiping god in spirit and the truth that state itself is proof that you are under attack i remember one time when god began to walk upon my heart i would pray and say lord use me and it says to take away these idols from your heart and I'm saying idols me where again I have never bowed down to anything that is not God I came from a lineage of missionaries where is, where is an idol coming from then many of us are very quick to select what we think we are free from I'm free from pride I'm free from lust I'm free from all of these things God I'm free enough and he says that deception is bondage itself are we together I hope you are not feeling insulted. This is a deliverance service. Oh, this is a proper deliverance service. Are we together? Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown and worship you. 
my glorious God I praise your name I lay my crown and worship you you be lifted above all other gods I lay my crown and worship you you be lifted above all other gods I lay my crown hear me I'm going to give us the next five minutes there are idols in our lives listen 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 before you start praying I want you to be sincere with the God of heaven when I was preparing this in the morning just cross-checking my notes I found myself praying I said Lord let me not come here and pretend before your people so I myself reveal what are the idols I'm not talking of witchcraft I know you will never go to a shrine but let me show you another shrine that is called a piece of paper lying down in your wardrobe you would rather give up God a thousand times than your PhD I'm not insulting it how about your church there are many of you if God says close your church now you will cost him to his face ah my means of bread my means of relevance I won't close it there are many of us your idol is your anointing there are many of us your idol is your prayer and your fasting you think because it's a spiritual activity on its own it cannot be idolized Satan is a master as using any other thing aside from God an idol is anything you derive your confidence from an idol is anything that qualifies to earn your loyalty including your fasting including your prayer including the abundance of revelation that you have including your intellect my bible says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the next verse says verse 7 be not wise in your own understanding it says fear the lord and turn away from evil listen to me there are certain obvious idols like idolatry lust pride these are very obvious ones so when you find out that you are free from them you can flatter yourself to believe you are free I'm free from lust I'm free from pride I'm free from witchcraft I'm not a false prophet I'm not a fake person I love Jesus and yet the master is still saying I cannot use you there is something about your heart oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you I will seek you in the morning I have learned to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days I like you to cry before the Lord in one minute before we continue father help my heart everything that has become an idol in my life regardless what it is Lord I pray that in this conference let it be dethroned 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 let it be dethroned
everything I have everything I am pastor pray forget about ministry now prayer warrior intercessor great man great woman of God campus fellowship president prayer group coordinator let's cry before the king we bow down and worship Yahweh we bow down and worship Yahweh Shaleke Baraka Sabrande Gelekosia Yahweh Yahweh I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and lords. Of lords, you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Go ahead and pray. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from dark. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. The Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. Hallelujah. Pray in one minute. Lord, let my life reflect Jesus, not self. I dethrone every idol. Idols of competition. Idols of pride. Everything that has exalted itself above you. Let it go down right now. I desire increase but not at the expense of your position I desire lifting but not at the expense of your position I desire church growth but not at the expense of your position in Jesus mighty name we have prayed in Jesus mighty name we have prayed 
Can I tell you? I want to challenge you. Practice periodic retreats as a man of God. You want to survive these days? No matter how famous you are, I want you to practice periodic retreats. There are times you must obtain grace to shut down any ministration. It doesn't matter what it is. The reason why men are looking for you is because you are looking for him. When you stop looking for him, men will no longer need you. I assure you on that. And can I tell you, human beings are very unforgiving. The day you cannot present to them what they are looking for you for, they will forget you as if they never, never came to you. So don't allow membership, let's not allow membership deceive us, conferences, I have all kinds of people who like me, believe me, there is light they are seeing from you, that is the reason why they are placing a demand. The day they don't see it, the same people who said let's make him king over us, will say crucify him. The same people who looked at Jesus and said crucify him, were the same people who ate his bread most of us here are ministers of the gospel and you know that the greatest pain you have had came from the people you raised so do not the, the bible already tells you that the heart of man is desperately wicked if you love members more than god you will be in trouble if you love conferences more than god you'll be in trouble you leave god to protect members they will leave you to find who is looking for god Let every member come and meet you loving God. They will respect you. They didn't find you waiting for them. They found you serving God. Whether they go or come, your worship was there before they arrived. Because sometimes we need to be careful. In a bid to want membership, our desperation is becoming pungent. And, we, they, and, and when people know it's as if you cannot do without them, please now, as I see we are not doing any other thing with our lives. And the moment somebody knows that I matter this much to you, they can wake you up at any time and say, come to my house and come and pray for me. And if you don't come, I'm not coming to your church on Sunday. No. Let me tell you what it means to be surrendered. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Lord, you get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my church, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. And I will tell it to my world, Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold I will tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold Yes sir For me this is not a special number Believe me I will shut down ministry A thousand times To maintain his presence The one who saw me in the wilderness When no one knew me it will be stupid to throw him today. David, do not forget the one who empowered you to kill the bear when you were alone in the wilderness. Let the glamour of the palace not make you forget him. Hallelujah. Just give me a minute or two. There is a circumcision that God is doing. Just before we move to the next one. Listen, Enugu State. When God finds vessels that are genuinely pure in heart. You see, 
when you love the Lord with all your heart you will never manipulate his people not for money many things we are trying to address are symptoms the real problem is that something is wrong with the heart competition the heart lost the heart pride the heart witchcraft the heart are we together merchandising the gospel the heart so in trying you don't try to throw a, a to cut a tree by removing the leaf one by one that is a burdensome work you uproot it and with all the leaves on it they will dry because it has no root again when you love the Lord with all your heart you will not take advantage of the prophetic that you have and manipulate anybody you will charge people to give with understanding when you love the Lord with all your heart you will not go and put a charm under your tie it or put it somewhere and be saying praise the Lord whereas it is by the power of a familiar spirit it is a heart condition ladies and gentlemen there is a generation that is at the edge of error and destruction if this heart thing is not corrected because for many people especially younger ministers who are coming up we have defined the correctness in ministry by the glamour and present once members are coming branches are expanding you are preaching well who can say you are wrong we need to be careful because there are people today who do not care about the heart condition once I can prophesy I can preach I am charismatic that is fine but that was not the way that the fathers taught us are we together there are some of you here who are campus leaders I presume there are some of you here who are leaders of prayer groups we need to trust God to tame pride tame pride among the many things we must trust God to work on is pride it is one of the cancers of ministers of the gospel pride are we together fight it like you fight the devil run away from pride because pride is one of the sins in the Bible that God directly fights you when God is fighting you who do you pray to when God is fighting you who do you fast to what anointing will you use to bring him down hallelujah so the purity of heart this is how God dealt with me this is how he continues to deal with me till today when I go before the Lord he does not just go and tell me a lot of wonderful things son the greater your pruning the greater the consecration the greater the sacrifice the greater the surrender the greater the glory period I surrender all to you everything I give to you I'm withholding nothing withholding nothing I give myself away we used to sing a very old song creating me a clean heart oh Lord do you know that song and renew a right spirit creating me a clean heart oh Lord and renew a right spirit within me Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. I like this one. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit.
Hallelujah. Some of you may need to go back and declare even if it's one, two days of spiritual emphasis in your church to say we need to get back and put some things right. Thank God for the building project, but let's suspend it for three days and get some things right. And pray and cry and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I got into the pressure of ministry and now my passion is just to invite ministers not just to find out what you want i'm in a place right now where my passion is who is doing what me too let me do it lord help me this is not a call to condemnation because i can tell you the revival that is sweeping across the nations and across every territory unfortunately will not have everyone as a battle axe that will be used those who will be used by god there are people today we do not know but there is a making and there is a formation and when God is done with them let me tell you they will rise they, you will say they came from nowhere but they've always been there being walked upon by the spirit being dealt with by the spirit too many people have disappointed God let's not add to the list did you hear what I said too many people have disappointed God let's obtain grace to not add to the list please sit down let me give you number two I'm not sure we'll be able to do the whole three but let's just do one more and then we'll close for this morning I will sing holy, holy to my Lord and Savior, my God and King. I will sing holy, I will sing holy, and I will praise the Lamb of God who sings upon the throne I will worship him and give him praise to him alone and he who was the least the least to come I will sing before his throne forever and ever you're holy, you're holy, you're holy, you're holy. You can fake power, but you cannot fake a relationship. God is handing to us a big secret today. This is what makes your fasting powerful. This is what makes your prayer powerful. This is what makes your word study powerful. This is what makes your ministrations powerful. My worship people, this is what makes your singing powerful. No matter what you come and sing on stage, the difference between a special number and a life-giving ministration it's not the mic, it's not the keyboard, it's not your voice, it's not the song, it's your heart. It's your heart. It's your heart. Don't think you are just shouting and crying for nothing. Allow God do what he's doing in your heart. There is glory that is coming out of that that circumcision in the spirit some of you by reason of what the Holy Ghost is doing now there are resolutions that are coming up no I need to change this this has to die once and for all this has to end once and for all 
this has to end i have to start doing ministry correctly this thing i'm doing these games i'm playing it has to end once and for all this pride has to die once and for all this loss has to die once and for all hallelujah listen do you know when God started working with me I just knew that a season came in my life where I started to see tremendous dimensions of spiritual power I didn't even pay attention to it I just knew that my life shifted in the spirit one day I had to go back and start investigating my work with God what what was really responsible was it the fasting was it the prayer was it the word study by the grace of god i've always been a practitioner of these things but at what point did my life change one time by the spirit i found it in the year that king uzziah died i saw the lord in the year my pride died i saw the lord in the year lost died I saw the Lord the death of flesh is when life begins the death of self is when life begins ah. you want the presence and the glory of God upon your life and upon his people no this one is not just receive it this one is a product there is a level of consecration in your heart the holy spirit is not a politician you will not bribe him and say come and back me up uh -uh. in the year king uzziah died i isaiah saw the lord in the year my idolatry for ministry died i saw the lord in the year the passion for competition died i saw the lord hallelujah that woman this one putting your hand on your face this one you stand i just saw light coming on you and the lord is saying i should tell you that you are a mighty vessel in his hand that he is going to use you very mightily in the name of jesus let the grace that is needed for your life needed for this next season of your life may that grace by the spirit of god come upon you that you will not be an ordinary person from today you will drink of this wine of the spirit in the name of jesus christ who is chidoze chidoze is it chidoze i'm hearing a name Chidoze. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and lift the way that you lift. Set our hearts on you So you'll do what you do There is someone at the back Just this row, right to the back The Spirit of God is saying I've been looking for you That He wants to lead you to a prophetic experience Haras, Havesh, Kabbalakas, Kobernia You are at the back Bring that person to the front, two of them. Please bring them to the front. Chidoze, I want to pray for you. I'm seeing one person. My friend, look at me. Where are you coming from? I came from Ghana, missions in Ghana. 
But I am from Enugu State. You are from Enugu. Look at me. There is a mighty apostolic call over your life. This young man, you see, God is going to use you mightily. I pray that God will lead you through the trainings that will furnish you and make you a fine brand of a man of God. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you. Hallelujah. Chidos here. I want to pray for you. I'm praying for this person, but then I'm also seeing the Lord is opening my eyes. I hope I'm not wasting your time. I'm looking at a coffin and the coffin just opened and I'm seeing the names of family members from that coffin. This is what I'm seeing. Hallelujah. Now hear me. And the Lord is saying there is a family here. It's like the destiny of that entire family has been buried by the operation of witchcraft. As I'm praying right now, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, it will be impossible for you to remain in that situation. I'm praying. I want you to bring those people out now as I'm speaking. The power of God is coming upon them. That every trace of witchcraft. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please bring them out for me. In the name of Jesus, everything buried. Parus Kadish Kabarikatia by witchcraft. Here at this conference, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, let there be liberty. I bring you liberty by the Spirit of the Living God. I bring you liberty by the Spirit of the Living God. I bring you liberty by the Spirit of the Living God. Let the onslaught of darkness and oppression over your life as God has revealed to me, let it come to an end now. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me another vision. I'm seeing a pack of papers and then I'm seeing a chain all around them. These are certificates belonging to the children in a family. Nobody educated but nobody is rising. And the Lord is saying I should release that family. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I don't know where you are, but by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be released now. Be released now. Be released now. I release that family that you make progress that you go forward in the name of Jesus the Christ of God hallelujah there are two ladies you are sisters now in this place the power of god is coming upon you i'm seeing that there is a spirit that makes that if at all you ever get married you must return back to your father's house i don't know what that is but in the name of jesus right now as i'm speaking let there be liberty. Let there be liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to minister to a man of God. The Lord is opening my eyes. I am seeing you entering inside your church and coming out. But in the spirit, the door of the church is locked. It has never been opened. This is what I'm seeing. This is a very strange vision. You are passing through a door that is closed. And yet you are going in. And every other person who should enter, they are not able to enter because the door is locked. Father, I am praying. I don't know who this man of God is, but whatever has closed the gate of your ministry, that all those who should come and be part of this assignment are not able to come. I decree and declare, let that door in the spirit, let it be unlocked now. Let that door in the spirit be unlocked now. 
let that door in the spirit be unlocked now hallelujah let me pray for you sirs. who does business here you're a businessman really a businessman that's what you do huh come again you are, are you a pastor you you are you are both a pastor and a businessman am i right on that you in enugu here i want to pray for you i'm seeing someone tens of millions of naira your money is being held for more than one year and that thing has not been released till now i don't know what led to it being held but the lord is saying as a sign immediately after this conference you will marvel and wonder in the name of jesus i don't know who that person is but i speak to you by the power that raised christ from the dead may that word come to pass speedily in the name of jesus christ why is he here the gentleman your money okay that's all right in the name of jesus christ as god has declared let it be so for you in jesus name and then all of you gentlemen i decree and declare there is a lady you are a lady but i'm seeing that you are the man in your family you are the one upholding everybody there is nobody who has been able to rise in that family and the lord is saying he's bringing help for you the pressure is too much on you you are a lady but you are doing the work of a man you are the one building a house you are the one taking care of your siblings i don't know who that person is but i stretch my hands let that grace come upon you now whatever has kept your siblings now in the name of jesus i release them right now i release them right now do you believe in what you're hearing in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus sas i pray for you i stretch my hands and i pray the lord who has located you in the name that is above all names that you return back and let things begin to shift in your life let things begin to change in your destiny and everything that is not the planting of god let it give way in jesus mighty name i pray in jesus mighty name i pray who pastors a church in newi newi that's all right you can stay where you are you are entering a very strange season there is a level of the power of the spirit you will begin to see in ministry it's a dimension of grace there is an answer to prayer prayer that you have been praying and god is answering you in this season and the lord is saying that pastor in Newe, that there is an assignment you don't necessarily have to come don't worry you're a pastor no problem i presume there are a number of people in the name of jesus for that pastor let grace rest upon you let grace rest upon you let grace rest upon you hallelujah i want you to write this down there is a move of the spirit that will begin to happen in a boy state and it will not be by people there there are people god is going to start sending there on assignment and it's going to be a matter of months some of you god will ask you by instruction to have an expression of your ministry there and it will be wildfire there are people god needs to train in that place but god is telling me that he's crying for voices in that place that there needs to be it's like a macedonian call a macedonian call a macedonian call a boy in state this is the spirit of god revealing to me there are some of you here the burden will come by the spirit of god in the name of jesus christ i am praying for you when that burden comes receive the discernment to hear and see because i'm seeing in a vision there is a small prayer group in that state this is what the lord is revealing to me 
and they have been praying that God will send somebody to come and mentor them somebody that can train them and help them to be people of power we are praying may God answer that Macedonian call by sending strong voices to that region in the name of Jesus please be seated number two the second key required to be used by God the second key now listen the call of God demands three major aspects of you one your heart two your mind three your feet for direction when God is done dealing with your heart the next we still writing the fifth kind of knowledge you must have if you want to be greatly used by God is that you must know and understand man as the zenith of God's creation this is a profound revelation you must understand man as the zenith of God's creation in all your knowings if you do not understand man you will live a defeated life what is man that thou art mindful of nor the son of man that thou visitest him can I tell you everything God will bring to your life will pass through man you must know man if you do not understand men as a species men from a spiritual and a psychological standpoint you will live a defeated life you will never be able to raise a great people if you do not know men this is where leadership comes this is where understanding the principles of relationships come there are many people who know God but they do not know men so so many things leave God but never arrive because the men who become midwives are often ignored and we do not know how to partner with men to make things happen can I tell you men are very important you need to have a thorough understanding of men number six which will be the final key that you must have and know is that you must know your adversary the devil you must know your adversary the devil if you do not understand the adversary again you will live a defeated Christian life as an individual as a man of God you must know your adversary the devil many people feel disinterested in learning anything that has to do with Satan and anything that has to do with the demonic realm in a bid to not magnify or glorify Satan but one time I was teaching on a series where I made reference to this and I told the people that one of the ways you become a professional is by understanding the disaster management systems around anything you are practicing. Am I right on that? If you are an oil and gas company worker, there are trainings that they subject you on disaster management, not because they want you to go through it, but so that you are secured when it comes and you know how to navigate your way around it one of the ways that you become a professional pilot is by going through trainings on plane crashes and how to be able to walk your way around it you cannot become a cabin crew member without knowing immediately you enter the plane even if it's for a 30 minutes flight the cabin crew take out time and immediately they tell you they are here for your safety and your comfort hallelujah many people do not know who Satan is unfortunately they do not know who demons are and their roles and determination to stop the purposes of God in your life let me announce to you sincerely there is a devil that is determined to destroy your life destroy your church destroy your relevance destroy your bishopric destroy your place and your role in God's program and if you do not know how to push the devil and to keep him at bay you may live a defeated life the moment Jesus was born Satan began a project until he was finally defeated it was a restless project to see to it that the purposes of God and the plan of salvation were aborted 
Make no mistakes about it. Satan is aware that you are in Enugu. He knows that you are in the southeast. He sees you when you pray. He sees you when you fast. He had the vow you made with your life that God, you can use me. It was not only God that had the prayer. He had it too. When you were rolling on the ground in worship saying, Lord, I will serve you. Grant me souls. Angels were not the only witness to that prayer. The realm of the spirit saw everything, including demons. And there is a determination to see to it that if left, they will tear everything that is pro-God in your life in pieces. But the Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. But you see, manifesting the triumph that has been wrought for us in Christ does not just depend on what Jesus did. It depends on your ability to know your adversary and to engage it. Jesus called Satan the thief in John 10.10 10, and he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Then he says, I am come that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. I have met many spirits in my visions. I have met many, many spirits. I've not seen Satan as it were in a visionary encounter, but I have met many demon spirits. I have an idea of the determination of the demonic kingdom as far as thwarting the purposes of God is concerned. They will use anything, accident, sickness, trouble, discouragement, whatever it is. So we must be equipped, not out of fear, but with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that helps us to walk in victory. I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. The answer to your prayer desire to come, but Satan hindered it. He says, do not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Enugu, hear me? Satan has a plan for this state. Satan has a plan for this region. And believers have a responsibility to know the adversary and know how to take advantage of all the weapons of victory that have been provided for in Christ to establish the purposes of God and to keep darkness as bay as far as this is concerned. He will come against your children. He will come against your spouse. He will come against your ministry. He will come against your businesses. He will come against all kinds of things. According to scripture, there are only three doorways that Satan has to oppress the saints. Number one is called covenants. Number two is called ignorance. Number three is called disobedience. These are the only doors from Genesis to Revelation. Every time Satan has prevailed over the saints, it was through the access of one or more of these doors. Let me repeat again. Door number one, covenants. Door number two, ignorance. Door number three, disobedience. So it's not enough to say, I will stand against Satan. These doors must be closed. Of these three, the most destructive of these three is covenants. Do you know why? Because covenant is transgenerational in its operation. Your ignorance affects you largely. If you are dead, your ignorance goes with you. Your disobedience affects you largely. If you are dead, it goes with you. But covenants have a transgenerational implication if left unattended to. Covenants are powered by altars. An altar is not a physical monument. An altar is a system of authorization. It authorizes the operation of covenants whether the enactor and the initiator is there or not. Hallelujah. Years ago, I was counseling and a dear man of God, very sincere person, even though very ignorant, he came and he stood before me and he said, Apostle, moving. Acts chapter 1, they were not aware. Acts chapter 2, they were not aware. Mighty manifestations were going on, but they were disciples, but they were not aware of anything at all. If there be any Holy Ghost. And he was surprised. Verse 3. He says, unto what then were you baptized? He said, unto the baptism of John. 
then he sits them down and begins to educate them that the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance that they should believe on the one who should come and after giving them that orientation they were baptized in the name of the lord and then he laid hands on them and they were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues and the bible records that there were 12 of them in number there is always more to know there are higher heights even if you are in heaven there is still room to come up here hallelujah and so we must never plateau in our press for spiritual knowledge because the level of light you carry determines the dominion that you will exact upon the earth your efficiency and your excelling in ministry is based on the kind of light that you have and that you can prove whenever you have light darkness must leave you john 1 5 the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not genesis 1 1 2 and 3 the bible says in genesis 1 and verse 2 it says and the whole earth was dark void formless and the spirit of god hovered round the face of the deep the waters and verse 3 and god said the talking spirit elohim said light be and that was the end of darkness hallelujah when god walks upon your heart your next project becomes an intentional pursuit of light let me submit to you as i prepare to round up there are many of us here your spiritual unbecoming and i'm saying this with all due respect the truth is that you love god god has worked on your heart but many people cannot come and listen to you because your light is small your light is small it is a dangerous thing if all the members in your church have greater spiritual lights than you they will not hate you but they can't listen to you this is an uncomfortable truth this morning's meeting doubles as a pastor's conference it is not about being competitive let your people look forward to hearing you because the opening of your lips is a communication of wisdom they know that you have studied to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth he says if these things be in you and remain they will make that you are neither fruitful nor barren in the knowledge of the Lord hallelujah I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never go anywhere and teach God's people and at the end they are just nodding and saying well this is just a total waste of my time I wasted time to have come here Ladies and gentlemen, light is not a gift. Light is not a gift. Let me repeat it. There is no gift of light in the Bible. When it has to do with the ministry of light, you, it is your responsibility to press for light. There are many ways that the Bible teaches us to have light. Number one is the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding unto the simple number one number two we are taught based on the mystery that is captured in the parable of the ten virgins that everyone can buy a lamp a lamp is an instrument that gives light and when you buy the lamp it is your responsibility to also look for those who sell the oil so that when you oil your lamp you can keep your light burning hallelujah number three one of the ways we get light is to look for somebody whose candle is shining and sit down in the room there because you can use the light of another and you can see while you learn there are many many people who are not sound in doctrine not sound in scripture i beseech you ministers of the gospel and believers if we are to rise to do much for the kingdom if we want him to trust us with men and destinies then we must contend for high level spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination doctrinally sound garnish with intelligence and grace when you communicate that to god's people god can trust you with his people god will not give you a membership of 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 and all you keep doing is just recycling inferior knowledge because you see the intent of the teaching ministry is to build God's people. 
James, I mean, um, Jeremiah 315. And I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. And they will feed you, the Bible says, with knowledge and understanding. When Satan wants to destroy a people, he strikes the shepherd and the sheep scatters. I made up my mind that all the people that God will bring to my life as a global family and the privilege of serving the body of Christ, I will continue to do my homework. Between yesterday and today, I have listened to the teaching yesterday night twice. What I taught yesterday night, I have listened to it twice before coming here this morning. I always listen, number one, for my personal edification because it is God speaking to me through me. And then number two, I listen for improvement. It is a culture and a discipline with no excuse, no matter how tired I am. It's not an excuse. What I preached on Sunday, I have listened to it twice. Before evening, I would have listened to what I preach now. Men of God, let's be sincere. It's not all about impartation. There is a dimension of laziness we must cast out this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I am always on a project studying something. There's Bible on MP3. Give me five minutes to be pragmatic and just give us a few guides. You must discipline yourself. Study scripture. Don't just study to fish out sermons for your overall understanding of scripture. It is difficult for the Holy Spirit to use your creativity to help you teach well when you are bankrupt of knowledge. When you give him the versatility of scripture, he can walk around your intelligence to make your presentation worthwhile. Even the gifts of the Spirit depend on the versatility of your intelligence. So God is calling us to sit down buy books, study. In my personal place of study now, I'm studying on the healing ministry afresh again. There are materials of Charles and Francis Hunter, materials of John Lake, and I'm studying materials of T.L. Osborne. I'm studying afresh. Why? Because God has revealed that he's restoring the healing mantles again to the earth. Just waiting until he comes will not bring it. You must position yourself. Are we together? You can study on church growth. You can get materials. You see, the internet has given us a, an uncommon advantage to learn. So that even if you are too proud to attend a conference, you can humble yourself and study alone within the room there. God has gone that far to make sure that any man of God that is not effective in ministry is just proud and lazy. Because the truth is that the means to grow has been brought within our reach. Hallelujah. I don't tolerate ignorance in my life as a man of God. I fight ignorance like I fight the devil. I want to know the things I do not know. And when I find areas of ignorance, I don't have the time to allow pride interrupt my growth. I'm on a project for growth. I'm on a project of expansion because I have taught you that the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel. If the vessel is small, it will make the oil look small. The problem was not the oil. The problem was the vessel carrying the oil. And the prophet said, go and borrow vessels, borrow not a few. You may not borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Ministers of the gospel, God is trusting us as far as our members are concerned. And let me give one last advice. This is with all humility. It is good to have programs and to bring in men of God to bless your people. But don't fail in your assignment of being a shepherd over God's people. You are the one assigned to the sheep. Do your job with diligence. There are men of God who in a year they may not preach up to three months put in place. All the other preachings are just people being brought. That may look like it's nice, but you are destroying the unique contribution God gave you to bring. You must stay and train your people to have a certain understanding. Then other graces and vessels can come and support them. 
are you seeing now there is a way you are supposed to mold and build your people so that it doesn't matter who you invite it doesn't matter whether you fully agree with what is communicated or not you are not afraid that your people will delve to error because you have structured them in a certain understanding are we together yes we need to obtain grace to settle down and do our homework this is a conference and so there is a limit to which we can stretch and teach but the way I teach in a conference will not be a way I teach back home because my people are with me they are with me technically for as long the longevity the lifetime of the ministry so I'm not in a rush I take the time to deal with certain things in a conference you are compressing information within the time allotted and you are trying to do justice to the topic allotted you see that now don't teach your people as if you are teaching in a convention you will destroy them don't just give them key points and keynotes structure their understanding and build them to be people of stature oh apostle but i've taught on faith the holy spirit is tearing me to teach on faith again one day says that i don't have any sermon again teach it again repeat it again and again teach it again teach it again until you begin to see the fruit of transformation from what you have taught in the kingdom it is not just newness that brings impact it is freshness if you are really a man of the presence you can teach one sermon one topic all year and it will not sound the same are we together can we find a place to pray now from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai. from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai. I'd like you to hold the hands of someone I want us to do a prayer of agreement over the church in Enugu don't worry if you cannot reach anybody just make sure your hand is holding someone even if it's just one person we are going to agree as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that it must be a new season for the church in Enugu and the church in the East this is an Eastern conference and it's time for us to pray and say father the sound that should come from the east to the nations let it begin to blow now let it begin to blow the contribution that has been allotted for the east hear me every region of the six geopolitical zones by the privilege of god's grace have been to everywhere across this nation regionally speaking I can tell you by the Spirit of God, I have discerned the unique demands of God and the unique expectations of God from that region as a contribution to His program in the nation. The East must not fail God, must not fail this nation, and must not fail the program of God by aborting the dimension and the contribution that God has mandated upon you to deliver. In the east there are prophets there are apostles there are evangelists there are missionaries there are teachers we are waiting for the unique contribution of god's grace that he has deposited within the east our prayer will be oh god let it rise from within our spirits the men and the women who will be raised by god the sound of revival that will come from the east is someone pray pray for every church you know Pray for every man of God in the East that you know. We are holding hands as a sign of unity. In spite of our differences, theologically speaking, our differences in terms of revelation and perspective, I'd like you to pray. Father, arise over the East. Someone is praying. Let the church in the east be a lampstand that has been put upon a bushel upon a candlestick not one that is hiding under a bushel hallelujah hallelujah i want you to mention every state that makes up the eastern region you know it 
mention it by name and say lord revival fire let it fall go ahead and pray mention it take a minute to pray hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord now we are going to pray we are ministers of the gospel and there is no point hiding it we know that there are purifications happening in the body of christ there are certain things that have been and remained a cancer to the body of christ make reference to my teaching the purified church the lord gave me a revelation of six deadly sins that needs to leave the church if we are to experience the glory of god and i've done a teaching on that you can use it as a retreat material and flog it out with destiny there are things that the devil is programming to destroy men and women of God, to destroy great vessels, we are going to stand and lift our voices that over the east, those things that bring down the great, from lust to pride to lying to witchcraft to manipulation, we are going to say, Lord, we raise a standard of mercy over the entire east, that those who are already trapped in some of these things, may God bring deliverance for them. And for those who are still standing, the Bible says, let he that thinketh he stand, take heed, lest he falls. Please open your mouth and pray. You are not wasting your time. Pray for our campuses. Pray for our churches, men and women of God. Father, that which brings the great down to the ground, down to the earth, preserve priesthood in the east. Preserve priesthood in the east. Let the prophets be accurate and pure. Let the apostles be accurate and pure. Let the evangelists be accurate and pure. Please make this prayer investment over the east. Beginning from Enugu, let it spread. That every practice that is antichrist, every practice that is anti-kingdom every wrong practice for gain every manipulation deposited several of his dimensions in you that in our coming together we bring a clearer picture of the lord jesus to the nations you are going to pray lord the grace to i to appreciate other gifts within the body whatever makes you pride in individualism this thing about church fighting church pastor fighting church people conspiring against one another those things we have to grow it takes maturity to grow out of these things lift your voice and cry for the unity of the church in the east the unity of the church in the east from our campuses to our churches in Enugu that a time will come when a man of God is organizing a program and another man of God can pay for the buses and says my contribution for your program go ahead and pray let this be a passionate prayer from your heart father the spirit of competition the spirit of jealousy that rejoices over the downfall of others we cross it by the spirit of god let the church in the east be united there may be diversity in terms of perspectives in terms of doctrine and practices but that everyone who names the name of jesus indeed give us tolerance give us forbearance give us accommodation for one another Please pray that prayer as we wrap up. Throughout the endless ages, you will be crowned with praises, Lord. Most high, exalted in every nation, sovereign of all creation, Lord. Most high, be magnified. Listen, this is what it is about. 
let there be unity among the men and the women of God let there be mutual respect I cannot dishonor the man of God dishonor the man of God dishonor the man of God dishonor the woman of God and say there should be unity no when you downplay on people's relevance and you make it look like they are not serving God and they are not serious there will never be unity can I tell you this as we wrap up everybody who loves Jesus is doing the best they know we may be different in terms of the level of light we have received but don't see someone pastoring 10 members and smile and just smile in disdain as if this man you don't know anything the man may be teaching the revelation that he knows and he's doing the best with what he knows you may be sound like uh, like Aquila and Priscilla but humble yourself and listen if there is nothing to learn from the man learn diligence there will always be something to learn when your heart is opened are we together we must drive away this pride this is what causes a lot of annoyance so if I downplay this man of God I downplay this woman of God I say you're a woman your ministry is nonsense we are, we are talking about serious people here how do you expect the person to feel you see and we need to be careful so that our members don't keep joining our, their heads together somebody comes and is reporting he's laughing at another man of God for you as his pastor rebuke the person there and then and tell the person that's not how it works no they are hosting a conference so what ah these people are hosting a conference they are laughing you can imagine their canopy is not even standing well do you know that there are plenty seats in the auditorium nobody even came and you join them to laugh no no you call that person and sit down and say my dear son my dear daughter let me teach you something every one soul that is in that auditorium is worth the blood of jesus and you educate that person otherwise he will carry that ignorance as a campus fellowship president court see your endorsement and go and mislead other people it will start from campus they will graduate and start a branch multiply that error and it will be a cancer to the body of christ i found myself supporting meetings i have no business about when i hear that god is moving is in a thing sometimes i just do it quietly oh please the ministers that are coming can this one help the hotel bill of another can you do this you don't need to tell them who did it the most important thing is that jesus is exalted i look forward to a time in the east where a man of god is organizing a program a woman of god is organizing a program and before you know it you get up and come and you say i just came to show solidarity and support just to let you know that we are with you in this even if it is five minutes here is 10 naira it is my support we thank god for the mighty things you are doing that you can differ in revelation and rema and you still hug one another and say thank you that was a great message can that happen in the east are we in agreement that that can happen we must start it beginning from here so don't downplay anybody and say this lady she raised a song and I didn't even hear anything it's as if the angels left when she raised a song stop using all those sarcastic expressions everybody is a student in training if God has granted you the grace to go ahead be patient with others while God is working on them and hear me when you find a man of God who is defaulting in character talking about them and laughing at them and wishing their downfall is not the way out as God grants you grace you can reach to them and say listen I know you are a prophet and you love God but have you considered making adjustment this way this is not how money is raised have you considered if you say that and they refuse no problem they've opened themselves to their own destruction but don't rejoice over the downfall of another rain comes to wash another person's church and you are laughing you are rejoicing no that is a Luciferian attitude I'm sorry you let me just say this so that we'll wrap up. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to do something now. And I'm going to ask you, it's a prophetic instruction. Don't waylay some of the ministers that are in front. But I want you to walk to everybody you can see. And tell them I appreciate the grace of God upon your life. I appreciate them sincerely. I'm giving you the next two minutes. Walk to somebody, whether you know the person or not. I appreciate the person sincerely. And if you know he's a man of God, don't pretend like you don't know. Tell him I listened to your message last week. Thank you for that revelation you brought. You are a person of prayer. Go ahead.
go ahead and go state let's plant the seed of unity right now respect them pastor thank you i'm aware that you are having a building project may god honor you please don't don't wait let those who are in front tell them i appreciate the hand of god upon your life don't say he's a young boy he's just a campus fellowship president respect him as a campus fellowship president go ahead and pray go ahead and greet one another appreciate them now you can go back to your seat men of god hold yourselves and greet yourselves thank god for the greek and hebrew i know you pray more than me but i appreciate you i appreciate the grace of god upon your life in fact i'm coming to visit your church next week you may want to tell one or two of them you can return to your seat and let's wrap up hallelujah hold hands again we are wrapping up i'm not wasting your time my apologies for stretching you hold hands together let these sentiments of competition based on money based on membership size respect everybody as touching what god has given them and you will find out that jealousy and envy goes you can celebrate with others she's a woman of prayer don't pretend she's not honor her for who she is he's a young campus fellowship president that you already see that god is raising him as an imagined voice don't look at him and say i started ministry when you were born he may be young but there is something he's doing he may be careless because of you know teenage or adolescent you can call him to order don't discourage him and act like he's not anointed when you see grace don't ignore it and you when they appreciate you reciprocate it don't be the only one receiving find a program that is happening that you are not the organizer and so hundred thousand and say let this be my seed i came for this apostolic conference and we have been taught if one person in the east gets saved the east has improved if one person finds revelation in the east the east has improved let's hold hands lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace the walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments of peace i was so humbled seeing pastors from other regions come pastor house on the rock all the way from abia hallelujah venerable i saw him all the way from onicha they just finished a conference not too long hallelujah reverend vindio lu from nsuka and a number of other pastors can i tell you if they did this for your meeting do it for the meeting of another person too just to encourage them you can sit down and say you know what i hear there is a great meeting happening I may not be able to be there but I can send two buses to convey students from the campus let Jesus be glorified and the truth is that with all that I've said there are people who still not appreciate you don't worry you are doing it unto the Lord you may not sow what you reap or you may not sow where you reap where you sow but you will sow you will reap what you have sown hallelujah I made up my mind that among the many things I will be to the body of Christ is a bridge that brings unity. Hallelujah. Yes. Respect everybody. Don't go and see some 
old reverend in your old church and while he's teaching you are there laughing and saying this man I used to know him as a baby he's still teaching this nonsense till now no no you go there you humble yourself they say lift up your hands you lift up your hand with humility don't put your hand in your pocket when they are saying lift up because you have become a general overseer it's bad mentorship you are enjoying it till the sons you are raising start doing what you are doing that's when you will see that you've not been a good mentor there are things we are temperate not just for ourselves but for the sake of those who are watching us so that we do not mislead a generation looking up to us i did this in the open especially so that ministers that god is helping who are coming will immediately kill that wrong spirit that is already growing so you can go back to your campus now an xyz fellowship can hug abc fellowship and say may god bless you i appreciate you we may defy revelation our perspectives may differ but it's too small a reason to be fighting one another and wishing for the death of others there are people who literally wish other people to die Abba. <laughs> hallelujah lord jesus we thank you you are moving mightily across the east and we thank you because in the name of Jesus, this revival fire you are planting in the east will be sustained. This move of unity will be sustained. This alignment in the spirit will be sustained. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we are praying that tonight, let it be a reign of your glory in this place. Let every man of God, woman of God, let everyone who comes here tonight, may they catch fire indeed. Lord, there are ministries that may seem to be going down. Fan the flames of the altar through this program. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, for ministries that are about to be birthed, we pray that you align the individuals correctly. That as they receive this mandate, they will run with it. But Lord, by every scriptural means we are praying, move over the east. Move over the east. Breathe over the east. In the name of Jesus, we pray amen and amen so i understand we are here from three o'clock let me encourage you for those of you who stay far i may encourage that you just hang around and be in prayer listening to the message again and preparing your heart it will be an impartation tonight i'll be sharing with you a mystery and then we're going to be praying and trusting the lord to minister to the needs of his people to jesus be all the glory in jesus name i pray Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands once again for Jesus. Please, those of you, those of you going out, give me your attention. In the next one or two minutes, will be true.